Okay, well, it's 12 o'clock on my computer and you're all, you've all joined me. So thank you. Your time is valuable to me. Um, welcome to our information session about the MA and MFA program and the application process. I'm going to kind of talk you through everything. Uh, thank you to Emily for organizing this and uh, advertising it. That really helps me because I'm always juggling teaching and coordinating and everything else. Uh, I see a few more people joining. Uh, my name is Allison Raggett. I'm a professor at CSUSB. Um, I've, uh, I'm in my 18th year. <laughs> And I run the ceramics area, and I'm also the graduate coordinator for our graduate programs. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of uh, fill you in on how to apply to our program, um, why you should apply to our program, why you should look at other programs too, and just generally like the, the leap that it takes to apply to grad school um, and sort of any other questions you might have. Some of you know me, some of you don't, but don't be, don't be shy either to stop me or um, just type into the chat and I'll check the chat kind of regularly. And um, I will also make sure that you have my email address if you have any further questions. I will probably do one more of these. I, I was planning for January, right? I think seems like it makes sense to do at least one more time, um, but nothing like a human conversation to figure things out, right, everybody? <laughs> it's so cold and like, um, uh, alienating to just like figure it out on the website. I, I get it. I get it. So, all right. So let me um, share screen and I'm going to just take you through a beautiful little presentation that Emily's built for me. And then we're going to go over to the website and look at some more content and just make sure that everybody is clear on application process. Our, our deadline is March 1st. So it is coming up and we do admit students just once a year. Okay, for the fall cohort. Okay. All right, so let me share screen. Here we go. Can you all see my screen? I think you can. Excellent. Okay, and you can all hear me okay? No problem. Everybody good? Let me just also open up the chat. All good. Excellent. I'm going to open the chat so I can see if you want to chat with me. Um, I'll check it from time to time. Okay, so here we go. Um, we are talking to you about the MA and MFA programs and here at CSUSB. Uh, and I want to just make this nice and big for everybody. Sure, there's a full screen option, but I'm not gonna attempt fate here. Okay, so there we are. Um, so we offer an MA degree, which is a master's in um, art, Masters of Arts in Art, and it's a 30 uh, semester unit degree. And we also offer the MFA Studio Art degree, which is 60 semester units. Now, people typically ask me um, if we, um, what's the difference, right? And so the MA degree, um, I call it the stepping stone degree, or it's a great degree for students who are, for teachers, for example, who want to increase their salaries. It's a great degree. Um, it's a great degree for maybe coming from another discipline and picking, gaining the exposure, the experience, the art history, which typically is sort of lacking for people coming from other disciplines. And um, the other thing about our, it, you know, and it's also a great degree for students who just, um, aren't ready to make the giant leap to the MFA program, but want to work on their portfolios and then apply to other programs around in, around the nation or the world. Um, sometimes, you know, certainly I always tell students uh, when I, between my undergrad and grad, uh, I took five years off. I worked as a studio manager. I worked in my field. And then when I decided I wanted to go back to graduate school, I was like, I got to work on my portfolio. So I actually went and took a, a sculpture class to like reorient myself after five years and get the work made and get the feedback that I needed to, to have a competitive portfolio. So, um, you know, that's that's also uh, the role of the MA it can kind of fill that gap for people. Typically people do it in two years. Um, so technically, I think if you were really like organized, you could potentially do it in one and a half. But for our studio artists, you all need time, right? With our wonderful facilities. 
The MFA program. Okay, so th this is a much more, com this is, uh, both degrees are competitive because of course we have limited space, right? Um, you all know a studio art takes up a lot of room. And um, for our MFA program, we do give uh, studio space. We provide studio space to those students. So um, we typically can accommodate no more than about 16 students at a time in the MFA program. So therefore it is more competitive. I'm not gonna lie to you um, because we only have so many slots, right? And that's it. Um, so don't be, um, you know, like for example, um, last year we had 30 applications and we admitted five students to the program. But um, absolutely uh, throw your hat into the ring, keep building your portfolio. For a lot of students, it takes a couple of rounds to apply and, um, the other thing that I'm going to just tell you about is that we have, okay, we're an interdisciplinary school, um, uh, at, meaning we, our department doesn't ask you to pick one area and stick with it for your entire degree. Um, and so unlike a lot of other institutions, they have quotas for every area, which obviously like organizational management, it sort of makes sense, right? But for us, we absolutely believe that you need to come in and play and make and be um, you know, interact with all of our areas, okay, and enjoy all of our facilities. So that sort of means that um, if we have a lot of people, for example, in painting or, or whatever discipline, um, we may only be able to admit a certain amount more to kind of because there's so currently so many students in that one area, right? So we sort of do need to think about the group dynamic as well. So, so please don't be discouraged. Keep applying, at, uh, shop around to other programs as well. Um, I do recommend public uh, schools uh, for the, for the obvious financial reasons and and your employability after graduate school. I mean, you're certainly employable for sure, but I'm talking more about like the the ratio of income to debt that you know you'll you'll be looking at once you come out of um, graduate school. Therefore, I strongly encourage you to look at public schools. If it's not ours, look at some other ones as well, okay? And I can I can talk to you more about that. Uh, of course, I'm biased, <laughs> but you know, it's important to think very deeply about your financial circumstances when, when you graduate. Um, so, and also the B, so the M, okay, the MA, um, I am aware that, you can be employed at the junior college level, but it won't, you wouldn't be very employable at the um, university level. The MFA is a terminal degree in, in studio art, everybody. So in other disciplines, it would be the PhD. The MFA is the terminal degree for studio art, meaning that you are then qualified to be teaching at a university level, okay? so. A lot of different things to think about. Most of our students coming in wanting to, you know, teach uh, post K through 12. And um, I certainly went into grad school wanting to teach at the end as well. So that's that's fairly normal and understandable. Think about um, who you want to teach. You know, what what age range, what level, you know, um, junior call. And I will just say that our community college um, uh, system pays incredibly well in California. <laughs> Actually, arguably, I mean, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I will say that um, as I talk to my colleagues, they get paid extremely well, possibly better than um, than we do at, at the university level. But um, it uh, teaching at the junior college level, it, there's a lot of good reasons to do it. So give that some thought. But you are going to be competing with people at the MFA level, but still plenty. Anyways, so we can talk more about that if you like. Um, so our graduate students, student community encourages intense experimentation with the freedom to work in any medium or range of materials and approaches. So I just mentioned that we really encourage you, invite you to explore new things. Um, towards the end of your degree, we sort of like, you know, okay, time to hone in, you know, and, you know, produce uh, uh, your thesis work. Um, we do have flexibility within our two programs to allow, in, allow artists from all paths to elevate their art practice to a professional level with support and mentorship with award-winning faculty. So we have a wonderful group of faculty teaching our, in our graduate studies. 
There are some opportunities. This is a very common question that students ask me about internships, paid student assistantships, and paid teaching assistantships available. Okay. Um, however, you should know that um, nobody is allowed to be employed at the university beyond, no student, excuse me, should be uh, employed beyond 20 hours per week during the semester. Obviously, we want to protect your time to be studying, um, and we would, don't want to, you know, ask you to work any more than 20 hours a week. So, so there is some opportunity there. Um, there are internships that happen. Some are paid, some are unpaid. Um, so it, every year it's a little bit different. Um, but I will, I am able to kind of steer you in the direction of where to find student employment. Um, we do offer uh, field trips. Actually, we have our MFA, at, our MA group are all going to Zizix right now with uh, Professor Steve King. They're going out to the desert camping uh, to have a creative uh, weekend together. We do special projects. I just finished up a, a, a mural for the College of Education with many uh, undergraduate and, and graduate students. Uh, we do group exhibitions. We have community-based projects and um, we have a culture where uh, if you have a great idea, it's sort of, and you've got the energy to pursue it, we we do our best to support you. So um, we try to uh, protect our creative world and not have too many rules. Certainly, if you have great ideas that you want to bring to CSUSB uh, to pursue, we you know we do our best to support that. Uh, so our students leave the program ready to launch their careers as college professors, artists, critics, curators, teachers, community leaders, and more. Okay, we have, we, I have a lot of great stories uh, of students graduating from our program. Um, one of my students uh, is now tenure track professor at a junior college, and he told me his salary, and I was like, wow, you're doing great. You know, he landed on his feet doing well. Um, so the, are requ any questions before I move ahead? I see Christopher's. Is it possible to apply, to apply even if we still need, say, 26 credits to graduate? Ah, um, I believe so, Christopher. From your undergraduate degree? 26. I mean, you're if you're destined to graduate, yes, it is possible. Um, yeah, go. Let's see. Please. Go ahead, Erica. I have two questions. Um, one sure. is, so with the MA, um, am I understanding it correctly? With the MFA, you get studio space on campus, but with yes. the MA, you do not. It's more, um, it, there's nothing designated, right? So I would, it is, um, we have yeah, um, yeah. actually, uh, so our MA students, it depends on kind of the studio needs. We will try to find you something, but it's not designated space in the grad den, which is our big area. No. And so then, the MFA is where you get this, you get studio space on campus. Yes. Okay. And then um, with the MFA, I heard that there is um, opportunity to be like a TA or even teach um, while you're doing the MFA. Is there exactly. anything like that with yes. the MA? This may be my next slide. Let me just check. It is not. Um, okay, let me get into that right now then. Okay, so our program is three years, right? Other programs are two. And um, I, okay, so I do, know, everybody, I just wanna let you know that I do know Erica. She's at one of our undergraduate students and I have other students alum on this call. I know that for sure. And here's what I do say to all of you because I want the very best for you, right? is that you should definitely shop around. And this is advice for anybody, honestly. Shop around and look at all your options. Um, we, do, uh, we, we do have an excellent program. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna lie. And I, yes, I, I will happily describe the facilities, Molly, for sure. Um, but for our undergraduate students, I do strongly encourage you to shop around because um, what happens when you go so you have your you have this community, right? You already have this community. You know me. You can email me when you go to graduate school at another institution, and you still sort of have me in a way. Like I know you, and I can write you a letter of rec or whatever. 
But what happens for students who branch out and go to another institution for their postgrad degree is that they double their community, right? Which is honestly huge. It's huge. Like it's a, one of the great things about graduate school for studio art, is, and I would imagine for any graduate degree, but I, I can only speak for this one, is that you make connections, right? That serve you in your future. Uh, the art world is small, right? And you run into people that are like, oh, I went to grad school with you, you know? And then they're like, oh, well, I'm on the hiring committee, right? You know, so that is really a big deal. Um, and so for our students who return for their graduate work, it's just that you don't get that op opportunity to double your community. Now, I, I get it, like people, our, our area, right, is vast. And the reality of going to another institution is not a possibility for some of you. But, but remember that our advice is all, always to our alums is like, definitely shop around, see what your other options are, look at other schools, doubling your community is a big deal. So I want you to know that. Did I answer your question? Okay, however, okay. I remember the question, I, I digress, but the question was about um, teaching opportunities. So what is really strong about our program is that we are a three-year program, not a two-year program. So um, you could technically probably get an MA or an MFA in a shorter period of time, maybe spend less money, but um, most people do two years and they're like, I'm not ready to graduate, right? I, I went through a two-year program. I was really not ready to graduate, but I, I had to because I went to a private school, which was an absolute biz business model. Now, the, the great thing about the three-year program is that um, you have more time with our facilities and you get to TA first, which is... Um, it's not a paid position. It can be for units for credit if you want to do it that way. Uh, but you'll you'll TA with a professor in the area where you would like to teach. If you are su successful at that, then uh, we do our very best to give you a section of that class to teach. So what's very unique about our program is that we, you are supported to learn how to teach as well, and but you also graduate with a. Uh, a t uh, an instructor of record is what we call it um, on your resume, which uh, helps you compete to get those the, that foot in the door to the adjunct teaching job. Uh, okay, those those two year programs don't certainly don't offer that. Um, you might TA you. I mean, it's pretty unusual. Um, it's really only the CSU system that I'm aware of that has kind of graduate teaching associates. I could be wrong, but but we we definitely this is one of our strengths is that we help so and we're there to kind of support you like I work with um, the grad students in the ceramics area and they come to me like oh, I had this weird experience or like how do I work this out with a student you know so you're not you're not just thrown into a classroom and you're all alone right it's a it's a supported professor experience um, and you have legitimate experience, which helps you stick out of a pile when you apply to the ad adjunct teaching world. So um, now I, let me just say that, um, oh, look at that. I've, uh, I'm gonna just pull over this other tab that I've got. Check this out. So this is all the information on our, um, on our website. You can review this, but the teaching uh, assistantship is right here. Um, I do teach um, the professional practices class, which is 6633 right here. And we, we talk about mm, all the professional materials, including the teaching materials. So that comes up, but we do our very best to make sure that everybody gets a, a teaching opportunity if they want it. Um, I will just say that it's always subject to uh, enrollment, right? So if we don't have a class that enrolls, we can't offer it. Um, and we do have obligations to our adjunct faculty, uh, but we have a hundred percent track record. So we're very proud of that. And that's why we could keep our program small as well. Okay, did I answer your question, Erica? Yes, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, Molly, let me get into the our facilities in a second. I'm just gonna finish up this information. So require so we're gonna move on to the application process. Okay, everybody. Um, we're looking for 15 images of work. Um, so people always ask, do you wanna like do you, what do you want to see? Like my best work or my skills, right? And sometimes that's not always the same thing. And I recommend that you show us 
a cohesive body of work, which means it could be one skill or one genre of art, but it shows a depth of inquiry, okay? Um, I would prefer to see that than just like all the art skills you might know and, and really nothing really connecting together, all right? Because we're really looking for maturity in, in one's art practice and ready, you know, ready to go deep into something. If you have work that is a range of media, for example, but kind of at, at the same level of quality and um, intellectual uh, rigor, put it together, no problem. That doesn't bother, we're used to seeing that kind of work, no problem. But I would say like it should all kind of make sense together. Any questions about the portfolio? Another question that comes up is like, what if I only have 10 works, but detail shots, that's fine. Now, some disciplines, you know, if you're a digital illustrator, for example, I know that you would probably just have, you know, one image is sufficient for everything. If you're an installation sculptor, right, you probably need four images for one piece. And I, we understand that as well. Okay, moving along, statement of purpose. Okay, people get a little bit well, this is the harder part typically for artists, but um, my advice about this is we're looking for a, around 500 words and to write about what your art says to the world. Um, Erica's heard me say that a million times, but what, how your, how your art operates, how you are influenced. Okay. So who, what artists do you look at given the opportunity to come to given the opportunity to come to CSUSB, what do you anticipate wanting to do? Now, listen, we you come to our program, we know that you could go in a million directions that you never could have anticipated. But of course, we want to know that you're ready to take this leap, right? So what do you foresee doing at our institution? Why would you want to work with us? And also our students who are returning, try to come up with some thoughts on why would you return to our institution? Like what, what benefit is it to you exactly since you already know us, right? So elaborate on that. Don't, I wouldn't recommend that you just say, well, it's convenient. Don't say that, <laughs> right? There's gotta be a burning reason, right? Okay, we wanna, you know, when we hear those burning reasons, we're like, oh yeah, we gotta, I wanna work with that person. That sounds great, you know? So we wanna hear that. Um, and, and don't be afraid to like have passion and um, don't be afraid to be who you are. We are the art and design department. We're very comfortable with like um, all a range of folks, you know, different is beautiful in our world for sure. Don't, um, don't curb your personality or who you are, okay? Be exactly who you are. Any questions about the statement? Okay, I see your, your, um, your question. I'll get back to you, Christopher, okay? Um, Letters of rec, um, they actually are not a requirement, but a recommendation <laughs> um, because we we know that a letter of recommendation could be a barrier for people who are coming from other disciplines or who have been out of um, the art world for a while. Um, however, I do encourage you to try to locate at least one, one letter of rec from somebody who might be a colleague or from the art world. And if it's not from the art world, maybe just more of a character reference, but um, it does help the committee. So do your best with it, but you your application will not be thrown out if you don't have any, okay? And then, um, then it, we, yeah, we'll go to the website in a second, let's see. Here is my contact information. So let me put this in the chat for all of you. Um, so you can cut and paste this. Whoops, there we go. Um, and let's dive into, and yeah, spring deadline. Oh, look, okay, deadline to apply for fall is spring 20. Yeah, deadline is March 1st, everyone, okay? So any questions about any of that material that I just shared? Sure, go ahead, Erica. Uh, regarding the letter of recommendation, um, I have a work history, so then I was thinking maybe it, it would be good to have a letter from one of my creative directors or like also a volunteer organization that I volunteer with and then yes. one um, professor. 
Definitely. That sounds wonderful. Yep. For sure. For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, let me get back to a few other questions. Okay. So Christopher, you were asking, what's the difference between the BFA and the MFA? There's quite a difference. Okay. Um, the BFA is um, a program that at, towards the end of our undergraduate degree that culminates in a thesis project and exhibition. It's additional units, but it's still an undergraduate degree. The MFA is a is like the final degree in art. Okay, so it's there's quite a leap in maturity and rigor. Did I answer your question? I hope so. And then let's talk a little bit about our facilities. Um, some of you know them, some of you don't. So. Um, I am available to tour people around if they want to come see our facilities. I know some of you might be out of state. So um, let me, uh, well, there is a good video um, that there's a couple of good videos that you can watch to get a feel for our uh, facilities. I see I'm in the catalog. I don't want to be in this. Hang on. Let me pull back here. Ah, okay. Here's our website. Facilities. Um, we have a beautiful department. I would say watch this on your own, everybody. Okay, um, and we're always uh, as you as you might have heard Erica talking about a bronze. Uh, we did an alumina pour. We poured metal the other day, which is very spectacular and hot and tense and intense. We have um, an incredible range of facilities. We have a beautiful ceramic studio that I oversee. We have a comprehensive design area. We have a, a comprehensive glass area. Uh, we have grad studios. You can peek at those. Uh, we have a beautiful painting studio up on the third floor with incredible natural light. We have a comprehensive uh, photo studio, printmaking sculpture. The VRC, which is the Vi Visual Resources Center, um, is also kind of like a study lab with lots of great resources, including a materials um, library. And we also have wooden furniture. So you can all um, check out the website and kind of navigate through. I believe you click on all of these, you can get more information. Do you have a specific question about the studios, Molly, that I can answer? Ah, private, are the, are the private grad studios shared? Okay, so our grad den looks like, let's see if I have a good picture of it. Um, it is one big, space with separated um, grad um, studios that are walled off. So every MFA student gets one of those studios unless they opt for another studio space elsewhere and then they share. So right now we have a lot of students in ceramics. And so what I've organized with them is that they share a studio in the grad den and then they also share a studio in the in the ceramics area that's like a bench space in the back that is grad only, okay? Um, let's see if we can take a picture, take a look at this uh, grad den, grad studios. They're sort of, yeah, it's a fun, oh, there's not a great picture here, is there? Mm. Yeah, it's just kind of a big white space with a se seating area where everybody critiques and then everybody has their partitioned off area most people like to pull like a put up a little screen or a curtain so they can feel private but and the walls are what eight in eight feet high six or eight feet high so it is open air and it's vaulted ceilings with skylights so it's a beautiful space but not entirely private but but certainly you can privatize it if that helps i hope that helps any other questions No? Let's see. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing screen and... Erica, please go ahead. Can you talk about the interview that we have to do for um, grad school, uh, the pre-interview? Yes, great question. Um, okay, so what happens after March 1st? is that our committee, so we have a graduate committee that's made up of five different faculty members um, who are the primary um, professors for the program, um, but certainly not all of them. 
and we review all the applications and we're looking again for like the quality of the work right and then also your area or your medium and um, if we have space for you there and then um, if we are interested in your application we'll invite you for a, a zoom interview uh, and this is usually about a 20 minute interview with the um, committee. Usually there's at least two or three of us on the call. And basically we're gonna ask you about your work. And so um, I think there's maybe four or five questions, um, but be ready to kind of talk about your work. It is nerve wracking, I know, but we try to put you at ease and just let you know, just, you know, talk about the work, talk about what you think you might be able to achieve at grad school, um, talk about why CSUSE looks like a school you'd like to attend. And then also um, we'll give you an opportunity to ask us a few questions as well within the 20 minute time frame. After that, we make our decisions and send out invitations to, to, apply, uh, to um, be admitted to the program. And then we also send out letters um, uh, that uh, let you know that you did not get accepted. Go, go ahead, Giovanna. Okay, uh, thank you. So my question is, um, as a grad student, are you able to uh, take classes in other uh, subjects? Yes. That isn't okay. in the arts? Great question. Let's take a look at the curriculum, okay? Um, let's see, let me get you over there first, and then we will, um, I'll, I'll review, I'll show you what the degree actually looks like. Um, I have to go to the catalog. Is that... Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, let me go ahead and share screen again. Okay, so for the M MFA, sorry, oops, let me finalize that share thing. Okay, so for the, um, M okay, so the MFA and the MA do overlap, but they have very, you know, different requirements. Um, so you take uh, this class, uh, Graduate Studio in Art, um, five times over, over three years. And then you also take stu the studio critique class five times. So studio, um, the studio in art is you practicing. At right now I'm teaching that class and that also involves attending events in the museum, attending thesis shows. It's art community, it's art making. You set goals, you achieve them with my supervision basically. Um, uh, studio critique is pure critique. So you're bringing in, you're, there's a schedule and everybody takes turns cr critiquing each other's work. Okay, um, 6617 is graduate seminar in critical theory and methodologies. It's, it is um, a, a theory, um, just like it sounds, uh, taught by one of our heart, art historians. And then also um, contemporary art issues and practices also taught by our art historians. So um, that is uh, writing heavy. You're writing about your work um, and researching that hopefully relating to your work, okay? And then um, there's also professional practices. This should happen in your second or third year um, where I, I taught that class, but anybody else may as well, um, where I teach you about being an art professional. We do some field trips, we go to openings, we talk about everything from um, you know etiquette, like how to be a professional in the world, how to deal with all the anxiety around that to um, CV, resume, um, uh, website, promotion, marketing, social media, all that stuff, okay? Um, then we have um, independent studies. So um, you do form a committee that will supervise you. So I'm the coordinator, but then you can also choose three other faculty or you could I could be on your committee. It's kind of, it all shakes out a little differently every year. And the, your committee of three faculty are kind of the ones that kind of help you finish up and support you basically. Um, and you do some independent study units with them. Um, you have to take two more art history classes that are um, at the upper division undergraduate level. So it should be at least three or 4,000 level art history, okay? 
Um, it, and then you also have nine units of electives. Okay, so that those nine units could be taken at in another uh, department if you wanted, but watch out for the prereqs. And I will say that sometimes I get um, students from other graduate programs asking to take graduate classes, and it doesn't translate well. Like it doesn't work out so well. Like I I want to encourage them, but honestly, I think. At least for us, I, I was I had to discourage them to do it because it just wasn't um, that foundation isn't there for them that uh, the rest of the students have. So yeah, it didn't work out. But um, that but yeah, there are three classes that you can take now. If you're new to CSUSB or the CSU system in general, please know that if you're a resident of California, um, the tuition breaks down in, in an interesting way. Um, so you can go part-time, you can go full-time. And um, if you go full-time uh, for a graduate student, um, I, I believe, let's see, what was it? I'm gonna pull it up because I always, I wanna make sure I get this correct. You can take, so typically students will take, a full-time load is six units, which is just two classes for a graduate student. Yes. So that's a lot lower, right, than undergrad. However, a typical, so it's actually half. However, um, so, but you can always take more. You can take more classes than what's required for your degree and it's the same cost, everyone. So for a lot of our students who are, don't have other demands on their lives, like they'll come in and do, they'll complete more than 60 units for the same cost. So um, that's something to consider as well. All right. And then for others who are just like pulled in a million directions, children, families, jobs, whatever, they just need to do the bare minimum to graduate. And that's fine, too. Um, did I? OK, does, did I answer your question? Oh, we're looking. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're looking at the um, nine units and that equals the 60 units. Now, the MA. Um, oh, also the culminating project is this uh, 6695 is a supervisory course. You typically will do it with your thesis advisor. And um, that's just like getting your thesis show done now. Now. OK, so the question is, what is the thesis project all about? And typically it is um, an exhibition in the museum at RAFMA. However, we're not close to other proposals if students have big ideas. It's okay. We're sort of, we want to remain flexible and open. Any questions? I think there might be something more in the chat here. Oh yeah, Emily, that'd be great if you can share the picture of the grad studio, yeah. I have another question. As Emily um, locates or puts this photo up, what are the class times if we work at the same time? Okay, good question. Um, so we do know you have to work sometimes, obviously. Uh, we try to have all of our uh, graduate classes on Tuesday, Thursday, or just two days, and we stack them so that most of our students will um, commit to work on the other days. Um, for students, we have had teachers in the past. Um, typically, the classes do start later in the day, um, certainly not in the morning. Uh, however, you know, we, it's not a guarantee. Okay, so um, in the past, our, our, our teachers have made arrangements with the professor to do a little bit of a hybrid situation and and or um, take sick leave or vacation time off to come to class. So um, we do, depending on the professor as well, like there is some flexibility. If you work with me, I'm pretty flex on, um, I, I'm very clear about like, I need you to be there in person here. And then there's like, hey, hey, we're gonna do this online today. So everybody just stay home or stay put. We, I try to be mindful of everybody's time. Um, especially studio time, because I think, you know, some people do work at home in their own studios. And I just want to, you know, take, preserve your studio time. Very, very important to me. Other student, um, other professors may not be as flexible. So um, 
but certainly several teachers have gone through our program and and been successful. It's just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a every every semester it has to be worked out basically. Yeah, so substitute teaching um Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, sub subbing would be decent because you could choose, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example. Occasionally, we might have to flip it to a Monday, Wednesday, but then you'd have, you know, you you can um, commit to substitute teaching on, on on other days. But I would say those those um, two, you know, studio uh, days, you would want to be on campus. You you don't want to be teaching full time if you could help it. Any other questions? Giovanna? Um, okay, so then I, I already work with the uh, university as a student worker. So am I able to continue that employment if I become a grad student? I mean, it would be fine with me um, as long as your <laughs> employer was fine with it too. Um, but remember, it's only up to 20 hours a week. Right, but there wouldn't be any like, oh, well, you're a grad student, so you can't do X, Y, Z. If anything, they should like give you a raise. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe I will. I'm just saying. It's just my opinion. Okay. <laughs> okay. You thank can you. Tell thank them you. I said that. I don't mind. But you know, like, <laughs> it's it's true. I mean, you're coming back as a more educated student, right? Um, mm -hmm. With more responsibilities and skills. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, talk to my union rep. <laughs> you let them know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so this is um, MJ in their studio. And uh, you can see this is kind of, you know, a decent sized studio space. Everybody sort of like makes it their own and a comfortable space, obviously, during our COVID times. Uh, and we have 14 of these in our what we call the grad den. Other questions? Do you know how many spaces are going to be available for fall? Good question. I okay. I think okay. So it's always a you know a juggle, right? Because we have to we have to um, anticipate people will actually graduate <laughs> to give up those spaces, right? Um, but I it's looking like um, five spots, four to five for the MFA program. The MA program is a little bit more open-ended and flexible. We have more flexibility with that. Um, Jennifer, this is an interesting question. I, I like how um, you're visualizing this. Pony walled space. They're not all identical. I'm not going to lie. There are a couple of spots that are a little bit bigger. The third years love to slip into them, but everybody has um, uh, a walled off area with an open door, the open, well, there's no door, like a, a door frame. And then people may choose to put up a curtain typically so that you, that you can just close yourself off and focus, right? People typically plug in and listen to their music or podcast or whatever and um, they're, they're tuned out, um, but it is ultimately open concept. Ah, great question, Molly, thank you. Grad students get keys and they have 24 seven uh, access. Yeah, you know, it, you gotta make the most of your grad life. So if you're a night owl, you know, um, Sometime, and my advice, you'll hear me say this several times, but you always do what the art needs. And if it needs you to work on it all night long, you just, you're, you're free to do that. <laughs> Other questions? We do, I will say, um, anybody out of state on this call? If you are, um, I, you know, I could try to give you like a, a studio tour or, or give you like a like a zoom tour kind of thing um I I um I I try to be modest but I'm gonna I can't lie our stu our our facilities are outstanding we have incredible technological equipment we have an, a stunning um printmaking studio uh with uh one risograph printer and a, another one on its way we uh, truly have incredible facilities 
glass, uh, like what, our whole, a whole spatial arts building where glass, ceramics, and sculpture is housed. And we all interface through the mold making area, which um, when I interviewed for this job, I was so impressed by and still love to come to every day. So final questions, everybody? Okay, so I have something else jump up here. Hang on. Yes, you could. Okay, so so if you haven't taken printmaking, right. Yeah. You, you can come in and um, learn a new skill for sure. We certainly have students who come in and take things like glass or printmaking, or um, I have a ceramics student who's come in and learned how to paint, you know, like definitely. Um, I do encourage you to do those things in your first year. That's the beauty of a three-year program too, right? Is that like you could pick up some new skills or get exposed to new things. When on those tier programs, you want to be careful, like you don't, it's not so geared towards like become like a beginner at something, right? And then be expressive with it. It's you, you all know how hard, how long it takes, right? But definitely printmaking is a great place for that. And I, I just have to say like printmaking is hot right now. Our students are loving it. We have, it's such a good community in there. And um there's, I think there's like kind of a return to old school, right? All this digital work is, you know, having everybody run back to, to manual analog, I think a little bit. So, but, you know, for us, we're sort of like wide open to both and, and um, truly embrace it all. Right. And, and it's, it's beautiful to explore how the two can technological and analog can feed each other in great ways. All right, one more question. And, um, oh yeah, deadline is March 1st. And I'm wondering if there's a benefit. No, no benefit at all to applying earlier, okay? I don't even look at them until the deadline. So take your time and make your best portfolio. You can feel good about your statement, you know. Another thing about the statement, everybody is like, be sure to get some um, somebody else to read it, at least one other person to edit it, you know, get, make it really your good work, you know, feel good about it. Okay. Writing is an important part of being an artist. I know it doesn't always come easy, but it is um, really useful for you to articulate your work into words. And um, it helps, it helps other people understand its meaning and depth. Okay. 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 Jennifer has another question about credential program. I would be doing my credential program after my BA next semester. Does this? Yes. Okay. So Jennifer, it does. I would be, um, you can only do one, one graduate program at a time. Okay. And plus you would be just driving yourself crazy. It's too much, too much, too much, too much. So um, I do talk a lot to students about where, like, if you want to teach art, where should you put yourself, right? Like what, which, which is, you know, I think that credential, do I do credential or do I do a master's degree, either the MA or the MFA? I talk to students a lot about that. And I think it really does boil down to who do you want to teach, right? Like, do you want to work with kids or teens, or do you want to work with young adults and adults? Um, those are very different populations <laughs> and some people are just born to work with children. Like they are just so good at it. It's just a very different teaching. Uh, it, uh, it's just very different teaching. Okay. And I personally have taught all ages. I have even taught in preschools, you know, um, and I've taught two-year-olds and I have, and I probably my oldest student is, you know, maybe in their sixties or seventies, you know, so um, and I, I, you know, I sort of, it's not just like, uh, you, you got to figure out who you want to work with. Okay. So if you're thinking about teaching K through 12, my, my, um, you know, and it sounds like some of you are already substitute teaching. That is an excellent way to figure that out. Okay. Go figure it out, get exposure, figure it out. Um, and, uh, just sample a few different options. Um, and, and you'll know, you'll know. Any other questions? All right, everybody, I wish you all the best. So great that so many of you came out. 
um, reach out if you have any questions or if you're in the area and you want to visit our studios, you're welcome to uh, do that as well. And I look forward to seeing your applications in March, everyone. Take care. Bye.